Gemini, Mystic Glow Lady here. This is your reading for September 2015. And as you can see, I have another new format. What else is new? So, Gemini, this is a general reading for. This is also for the Ascendant in Gemini. If you know your Ascendant, which is your time of birth, please make sure that you look at that also because that will be more exact as to what planetary aspects are hitting uh, what house, okay? That's why this is just a general to give you an idea. You know, the Gemini, I think, <laughs> your mind's always working. It is an air sign. It is a male sign. It is those born May 21st to June 20th. They are very good at communication, inquisitive, versatile. They are a mutable sign, which means they are highly adaptable. Okay, so as you see this new format, this is the fifth of six videos until I, I find the permanent format that I'm going to use. Um, you know, lights, camera, action, uh, titles, getting the, the titles so that they're readable, and um, yeah, I'm, I'm working on it. I am a Pisces sun with an Aries ascendant, and you see me at work. <laughs> okay, let's start it out with the sun. Now, I will be making another video, and the video will... Uh, go over these more in detail so that when when you listen to a reader whether it is myself or another that you will understand what we are talking about okay you will learn the different glyphs the Sun that is the glyph for the Sun the Sun is in a sign for 30 days the Sun of course is for Sunday and then we also have the glyph right here for Leo because it is most excited in Leo. Now it is also exalted, means woohoo, yeah, yeah, in Mars. And it is at a, um, what they call a detriment right here in, um, in Libra. Okay, and whereas this is uh, where it's at home in, this is also where it falls in, in Aquarius. So these you will find on uh, all of them, and I'll, I'll, I'll go, I will go over them in detail on another video. Okay, so the sun, it rules one's essence, spirit, husband, wife, father, vitality, health. It's a fire sign, and it is ruled by the fifth house. Now... In the month of September, the sun is at 8 degrees of Virgo. Okay, so Virgo is in our fourth house. And Virgo is the, I analyze, the earth, female, organized, analytical, practical, in your home. You like your home more organized, and the sun is shining a spotlight on that. Do you have your sacred space that you need in your, your home? Okay, so the sun's shining on your home, your property, your mother. Now, the new moon. The new moon is new beginnings. And it starts out with a new moon in, um, it's a solar eclipse on the 14th in the sign of Virgo. That's a, a new moon in Virgo. What are you shining? What are you, um, what are new beginnings that you're having in your fourth house? What's the shine, sun shining? The moon, the new emotional beginnings that's going on in in your home. 
on the 14th. Then we also, <clears throat> excuse me, then we also have the full moon. And this full moon is a full lunar eclipse. And it is on the, oops, sorry, it is on the 27th in four degrees of Aries. And that is my ascendant. So I'm looking forward to what is going to be, what kind of big changes are going to be happening for, for me um, the end of September. So I will be sure to keep you posted. And this is how you work with the planetary energy. What is it that I'm going to be letting go of? You see the full moon, it changes signs every two and a half days. And it rules the age's birth to five. And um, the, the full moon is when we let go of, okay? And it, the moon represents our emotions, our soul, symbolic of the mother, wife, and our magnetism. You know how the moon has an effect on the Earth's tides? Or, well, the, the Earth's tides, the water on Earth? <laughs> and what is the body but a lot of water on Earth? So, uh, what, are you, what are you going to be getting rid of? And as I said, that is four degrees of Aries, and Aries is in your 11th house. Right here, Aries. I am independence, courage, pioneer. But it's in your 11th house of hopes, wishes, friends, and associates. So, are you needing to get rid of some? So if you need to, it's going to probably do it in a big way. Um, remember, if they are not uh, balancing, then there is an unequal. And is it you are giving or they are giving? So a relationship has to have some type of a balance. If it doesn't have some type of a balance, then uh, who's losing? And that's what I call a psychic vampire when people just take that energy and don't replenish it. Uh, eventually, you're going to become sick or you're going to get out of that situation. Okay, bottom line. All right. Now, here we go. I'm looking at this and it's like, I'm hoping that's not coming out backwards. Because it looks like it's coming out backwards. All right, Mercury. Guess what? Mercury, planet of communications. Miscommunications during a retrograde. Uh, uh, like I said, I'm hoping that this is not recording everything backwards because that means that Mercury's starting early going retrograde because it's not supposed to go retrograde until the 17th. And that is, um, it starts out five degrees of Libra and we have Libra in your fifth house of fun, creativity, sex, children. Okay, so it's going retrograde there on the 17th at 15 degrees of Libra and it ends at the end of the month at 7 degrees Libra. So where is the balance that you are needing in your fun, creativity, sex, children? The communication, where's the balance in that communication? Are you needing some more communication in, in that to uh, make you feel better? What kind of communications? Remember we were talking about the friends earlier. Okay, Venus. Venus, that goddess of love and beauty. It is retrograde 14 degrees in Leo. And it's also going to be conjunct with Mars on the 1st at 14 degrees of Leo. Okay? Now we see what Venus we see what Venus says retrograde laziness, drama, focusing on money. Okay? So what have we been doing recently? Okay? It's um, going direct on the 6th at 14 degrees of Leo, and it only moves to 23 degrees of Leo. So Venus in the month of September, in the sign of Leo, that 
it is going to be down here in, uh, let me see, right here with the sun. Whoops, I'm sorry. We got it wrong. Up here in the third house, communications. So it looks to be, since Mars is there at the beginning of the month, the communications, short trips, siblings are going to be multiplied and plentiful because Venus is in there the whole month. And Mars, as I said, is at 14 degrees conjunct, but on the 26th it does move down into the sign of Virgo. Okay, so that will, um, right here, in your fourth house. So working on that communications, is that, is that also a trip? A trip back home? Is that a possibility? That would be really, really cool. Uh, Gemini, I'm sure that your family would love to see you uh, back home. So if you're thinking about it, talking about it, most definitely take that trip back home because uh, there's lots of new beginnings emotionally for you coming up in, in September. And it's, it's well-deserved. It's really, really well-deserved. Okay. Now, Jupiter. Jupiter is that multiplying planet. Okay. It's at four degrees of Virgo. What were we just talking about? Um, all that Virgo energy that's going on. Well, Jupiter's going to be multiplying. And as you see, Jupiter stays in one sign for one year. It rules the ages 57 to 68. And it's that spiritual quest. And that is in your your fourth house. Now, you see it also, justice, law, truth, banking. Is there some new truth that's going to be revealed in your home? Is there some help coming from your home in order to help you in the month of September? Saturn. Saturn that teacher, okay, that Lord of Karma, that is at 28 degrees of Scorpio. And remember, that's been retrograde. It's been retrograde, and it has gone direct. It's going to be reaching Sagittarius, zero degrees on the 18th, and that's where it's going to end up. But Saturn... Where are those lessons? Where are those lessons that you had to learn? Have you learnt those lessons? Now, that is in your work and also your health, daily routine, okay? Um, Saturn was retrograde, and that was the loss, depression, and pain. Now that it has gone direct... Okay, uh, Scorpio, that intuitive, determined, intense, it is, it is fixed. It's right in the middle of it. It's stable, but it's going into Sagittarius. And Sagittarius is enthusiastic, adventurous, optimistic. It's looking forward to new things. Okay, so what is not working at work? What needs to be changed? Learn those lessons because Saturn is going to your relationships and it's going to be redoing your relationships for two and a half years, okay? So if you didn't figure out what kind of work we're going to be doing yet, it's, a, it's coming into your relationship house. And remember, working on you is the most important relationship that you can have in your life. And Gemini, you like to think. You like to think a lot. So I think you can do it if only you try. All right. Uranus, unexpected change. 
It is retrograde in Aries, 19 degrees, and that's where it ends. And you see that RX, that retrograde, is the individual, the nonconformist. Okay, it's a fire sign. What kind of revolutionary changes do you have to, to bring out? What are you bringing out into the world? Huh? It's in your 11th house of hopes and wishes. What kind of new things can you bring out? What kind of social change? Maybe it is through uh, your friends for the invention, uh, social reform. What is that sixth sense that's starting to tell you about your friends? Okay? Use the energies. Find out what planets, where those planets are, and where they're hitting you in your birth chart. And you can use that energy to either ride that wave or at least help to find the sanity that you're the you know the insanity that you're going through okay because you're you're not alone and we have the house of illusions or the planet of new illusions delusions and that is is neptune and neptune is retrograde eight degrees in pisces and it will stay in retrograde only moving one degree now each sign is 30 degrees so when we're talking numbers okay retrograde going backwards and this one doesn't move at all so since it's retrograde you see that truth is revealed what kind of truth needs to be revealed in your in your career um, remember the illusions delusions escaping with alcohol and drugs but it's also that Christ-like universal love okay psychic dreams visions are you listening to what you are told in your in your mind's eye are you listening to your dreams concerning your career your status your father your fame are you looking at these clearly to see the path that you should take? The path that has held you back in the past? Or possibly a new, a new career? Pluto. Pluto is that death and transformation. It is the death after it is the death and before birth okay um, what are you changing because Pluto it was retrograde and it's staying retrograde until the 25th when it goes direct at 12 degrees of Capricorn so it's in Capricorn at 13 degrees and at the end of the month it will be at 12 degrees and Capricorn that's the I use and it's in the eighth house of inheritance taxes past life relationships so the I use the earth energy it's also a female okay ambition determination responsible it's cardinal it's action it's new things when you have a death you have a new beginning so where you were dealing with inner fears in the past it's time to uh, turn them around and let's go let's go forward with it okay what needs to be turned around what needs to be what needs to be changed what do you need um, what do you need changing in your life what is something that has has held you has held you back what are the new things that you have to 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 do okay Gemini this was as I said a general reading 
and it was also correct for the planetary houses of the Gemini Ascendant. And now I am going to shuffle my tarot for a tarot reading. And uh, this is this is for Gemini. This is for Gemini. I'm going to do it in your in your houses. And um, ooh, we have a card that jumped out of there. Okay, shortened force, eight of swords, mental communication, illness, travel. Look at things straight as they are and communicate them because you are one of many, okay? The information that you have that has been making you sick, whether you are holding it in or whether you uh, really need to, to speak more of it, the illness, the pain that is coming from the middle, okay in the middle there is a lot of illness and and pain and this is definitely um, ringing in my life because of my second son and it's in the middle where his pain is and I send out that much needed love and the surrounding of the white light to protect him so spirit always comes through and if you heard that message just remember you're not alone and to always say prayers because worry is a wasted energy it does us no good and therefore if we spent the time in prayer on our concerns we really wouldn't have nothing to worry about okay because when we turn it over to a higher power that's that living divine and I'll tell you what I'd rather be happy now on the bottom of it we have the high priestess and you see your emotions now this is beneath you the energy that you have to work with so you have some powerful energy beneath you okay all hope is not lost all hope is is it's it's the potential is there okay you you are a gemini and that motto i think and if thought creates form what are you thinking okay gemini we know you love to communicate but what are you what are you thinking Okay, here we go. The Four of Swords. The rest from strife. Instead of, of worrying, let it go. Okay? You're going to be okay. Alright? You, yourself, your body, appearance, you have a rest from strife. So that pain that has been hurting you, whether it is mentally, emotionally, or physically, it is going to, to let up in the month of September. Now, in your second house of earnings, wealth, possessions, you have the Hierophant. And the Hierophant is at home um, well, you see Taurus there at the bottom, that glyph, and Taurus, that's in the second house. That's at home in the second house, okay, as well as Venus, that love. So, thinking about those that you love, the cancer that's in your second house, the possessions, you are starting to understand that the emotional attachments mean more than the wealth in possessions. In the third house, <coughs> excuse me, oh, I better take a drink and moisten my throat. Ah, 
have to do that, otherwise my throat gets too dried out, and then I really get stirred coughing. Okay, hang on here a minute. That's how we're going to do this. This is what's coming up. And also, I'm going to put one of those uh, Curiously Whatever Mints into my mouth, and hopefully it will be enough to moisten it that I don't have to have one of those coughing fits, and I can finish this reading in peace. Okay, let's see. Well, I guess if I do it that way, then I don't have the shadow. See, we're learning. Okay. So, third house, communications. We have the Prince of Cups. The Prince of Cups is our emotions. So, communicating with family is giving you that emotional support that you need. Okay? When we look at the at the cards, we look at it symbolically, okay, because of it being a general reading, it's impossible for me to, to identify everything for everyone. So when, when you are taught to read Tarot, you are told to look at the card because the picture will tell the story. So when I'm talking about the emotions, you look at the other little symbols that are in there speaking to you, okay? Look at it symbolically. Now Mars is in there, Venus is in there, um, there's uh, emotions in there. So not all of you are male, not all of you are female, but we are talking about a younger, a younger male in, in this. In the fourth house of property, home, mother, sacred space, you have the Ten of Pentacles. The wealth that is coming to your home. You also have Mercury and Virgo in that card. And that is communicating. That is getting things organized. So, you have the Jupiter that's in there also, and that's that multiplying in your home. So, money is definitely going to be multiplying in your home sector. In your fifth house of fun, creativity, sex, children, you have the Ace of Pentacles. The aces are new beginnings. Pentacles is money. It is the flow of energy. So the fifth house of fun, creativity, sex, children, Mercury's in there communicating about having some fun. Yeah, there's going to be some new beginnings to having some fun in September. Okay, keep watching for those new beginnings, for the new things to happen. Now... We have the uh, six, sixth house, and that is the health, work, service, daily routine, and you have the ten of swords in there. So, that's something that is very important to address, and as I said at the beginning, it's in the middle of it, okay? When you are talking swords, mental illness, communication, travel, and it's in your sixth house of health, work, and you have Saturn there, and that is that teacher. What lessons did you need to, to learn concerning work? you know, daily routine, how you were living your life. Outside manifest as illness within. So Gemini being that you think what illness have been have you been manifesting and it's been making you ill. It's been making you sick to your guts. So as I said, worry is a wasted energy. Thoughts create form. What do you think? Alright, don't, don't focus 
learn that lesson and don't focus on the negative because what you focus on Jupiter is going to multiply okay now in your seventh house in your seventh house of partnerships, contracts, relationships, it is the hangman. Now that is hanging yourself by the foot. Remember that Mercury is going to be retrograde. So in September, it is very, very important that you watch those contracts and that you do not hang yourself. Learn to stand up for truth. Learn to stand up for justice. And that begins with you. Okay? Truth and justice of who you are. Alright? Especially with partnerships, relationships, partnerships, contracts. Remember, Sagittarius, enthusiastic, adventurous, optimistic. Alright? So, be that. Don't be that hangman, okay? Don't be that hangman. If you're, you know, if, 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 if you're hanging yourself, okay? If you're crucifying yourself, you can't complain because you're doing it to yourself. So it's that self-crucifixion. What do you need to let go of? What, do you, what is the problem that you need to identify in order to solve a problem? You have to identify it. So identify that problem that is making you sick. Look at it in your health and work sector, your daily routines. What are you doing? What are you thinking that's making you sick? All right. Now, in the eighth house of inheritance, taxes, rela or, yeah, other people's money, you have the ace of wands. Now, there are some new beginnings. And there are some new beginnings that are beside each other. Okay? But even though they are beside each other, they are also square each other. Okay? How these cards are set up, that is is just how, how these guys are working. Okay? It's like this is square, this is square, this is square. This is in opposition. But I'm going to be going into that a little bit more. But it's still something that you have to to consider okay so the the energy that's coming in from fun creativity sex and children um, it's square you know the aces of wands in 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 new beginnings new, new you know working with other people and it's it's right there with that um, um, these the self-crucifixion so you know there's new beginnings that are coming but you have to believe that there's new beginnings coming and you can't be using your mental abilities to self-sabotage yourself okay now in the ninth house in the ninth house of long distance travel spiritual quests and higher learning that Aquarius energy is the humanitarian, the original, the futuristic. And the King of Wands is in there, you know, with your emotions, what kind of new beginnings are you going to be having? Okay? Are you going away to study? Are you looking at the possibilities that this experience can bring you because the I, the Aquarius the I know the I know energy that's in there you know what you need to do is that enough for you to do what needs to be done in the tenth house your career house you have the nine of cups the material happiness in your career, your status, your fame, your father. You also have the Jupiter, that multiplying, and Pisces. You have that psychic energy that is, that is in there. Okay? So, it, it's, it's, it's banging. Neptune is in there too. Remember, the truth is being revealed. So, what is it 
that is being revealed because whatever is being revealed is going to be helping you in your in your career status and that's being emotionally happy so the outcome of what is coming you're going to be happy now the bottom line is the present the middle line right here is the future and here we have the the past so when we're finished we'll go back over and we will check it out and see what we have now in the 11th house of hopes wishes friends and associates the saturn and the sagittarius okay now this is the uh, oppression okay what's holding you back what's holding you back um, is that from your friends or are your friends holding you back okay now Saturn's that teacher in there now remember Saturn is going to be moving into Sagittarius okay now that's that's something that you might want to um, you know seriously consider you know what are those lessons that you're needing to learn because on the 18th it's going to zero degrees it's going to zero degrees and it's going to be in Saturn and that's going to be for two and a half years Your hopes and wishes, your friends and associates, what can you do to change? Now, here, the six of, of cups, okay, the pleasure. Now, this is going into your 12th house, okay, your 12th house, it has Taurus in there, the I have, I have strength patience, values, it's a fixed sign so it's stable. And that karma is jails, institutions, secrets, hidden enemies. And it looks like you are going to be happy with the outcome of that situation. Okay, the sun is shining, you have Scorpio energy. So something is going to be revealed. What needs to be revealed? You can see that things need to be revealed. And that is the past. What are the things that were done? What are the ills that have been done to you that you need to get healed in order to have that emotional, mental, physical re renewal? Okay, as we said, it's coming to the guts. So what are you thinking that, that you are taking it into your guts? Watch the way that your mind thinks because it's making you sick. Okay, um, be, when you think, when you think a thought, what does that thought think? Is it good? Is it bad? If it's not good, then don't think it. Okay? Don't think it, otherwise it will grow. Yes, it's good to consider, but that doesn't mean to focus on negative 24-7. I was told a long time ago to take a piece of paper and write down the good and write down the bad. And what can I do about it? That's that serenity, serenity prayer. You know, if... If I can't change it, you know, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, but it's the wisdom to know the difference. So if there are things that you can change, then it's worth the energy that you spend. But do it in prayer and not in worry, because the worry is making you sick. Now, in the future, okay, you have the Hierophant, the Ace of Pentacles, Ace of Wands, and the, um, the Oppression. What is holding you back, okay? Because as it is in the future, nothing is set in stone. Things can be changed. But what is, what is holding you back, okay? Now, when we talked about the past... And that was your your health, you know, your health, your daily routine. And now we're over here in the fifth, 
you know, your friends, associates, hopes, dreams, you know, what is not, what is not working? You know, what is not working because it's correlated. And now we're going to come down here to the present. And right here you see, right there, you know, the hangman. That's your own self-crucifixion. Okay? So, it's all tied to you. What happened in the past is going to be holding you back in the future if you keep the information that you have, that pain, that hurt, that sorrow, if you keep that in okay it's not going to to get um, you, you're not you're not going to heal you are not going to solve the problem okay it, it, it will it will continue to manifest and fester all right remember resentments are like swallowing poison and waiting for someone else to die okay you know you're resenting you are hating on something that someone did said um, their actions created your reactions, but do they even know the damage that they did? Most of the time when we have a resentment, they don't know what they did, whether they intentionally did it or not. Okay? Yes, you're right. Some people do know, but I've learned. You know, I stick out my, my, my finger with that threefold. You know, I'm not going to wish you bad because I don't want that back on me. Okay, you know, threefold law. One finger out, you know, has that threefold back. You know, point. What? What are you? What are you doing? <laughs> because it's coming back. It's coming back. So be very, very selective. Um, you know, what I'm seeing is don't get in your way. You know, don't get in your way this month, Gemini. Um, that's that's. Um, you have opportunities that doesn't mean that you don't have to work for them but don't get in your way while you're doing it and it's hard to fight the enemy when they have an outpost in your head so listen to your gut right now it might be sick especially if you aren't listening to it so listen to your gut and when they when you think and when you think and it's going against your gut and your heart's the mediator, well, that's when you're going to have the heartbreak. So, Gemini, no matter what you think sometimes, listen to your gut. If it's balancing, your heart's going to be happy. Okay? So, concentrate on happiness. Alrighty, let me know if you want a personal reading, and please make sure to like, share, subscribe, and comment, and all that other good stuff. Um, I have one more video. I'm noticing different things that I'm going to be tweaking on this format, so it's still a work in progress. That's a Pisces, Aries, Ascendant, and Leo moon for ya. <laughs> okay, see you, love you, bye.